What's up everyone? Welcome to Dennis Simplifies. In today's video, we are going to compute the net pay of 100 employees in C++, but as usual, the algorithm first and then the code. So, let's simplify. Employees of JB and Sons Consultants Limited are paid at an hourly rate of 25,000 cities per hour for regular hours and one and a half times per hour for overtime hours in a week. Any hour worked over 40 hours per week is overtime. The following national tax sliding scale is then applied to determine the amount of tax to be paid by an employee. In addition, 6% of an employee's gross pay is withheld for social security contribution, 3% is withheld as constituency tax, and 2% is withheld by the employer as a welfare contribution. If an employee has more than 3 dependents, then an amount of 5,000 cities is paid for each dependent in excess of 3 towards National Health Insurance Scheme. The company has no more than 100 employees. You are required to write a computer solution for computing a worker's gross pay, the deductions and his or her net pay. Your computer solution should allow for a number of staff details to be entered for the necessary computations. To the algorithm. From the question, Employees are paid at an hourly rate of 25,000 cities for regular hours and one half times per hour for overtime hours. Again, according to the question, the company has no more than 100 employees. So we want to compute the gross pay, deductions, and the net pay of every employee. We are going to set a for loop which will run from 1 to 100 and do the computations for each employee each time it runs. Now, to know the gross pay of the employee, we must first know the number of hours the employee worked. So we ask the employee to enter the number of hours worked. Again, to be able to compute for the national health insurance contribution, we must first know the number of dependents of the employee. So we ask the employee to enter that as well. Now, if an employee worked for less than or equal to 40 hours, then the employee is working within the regular hours range. So the gross pay of this employee is the hours worked times the regular rate. That is, if the employee is working for more than 40 hours, which is considered overtime, then the gross pay of the employee is 40 times the regular rate meaning you will pay the employee in full for the first 40 hours plus for working overtime, you are going to pay the employee for the additional hours after 40 hours, which is hours worked minus 40 at the overtime rate. So we end our F. So at the top, I meant else, not that is. So if the employee is working for regular hours, that is, if the number of hours is less than or equal to 40 hours, then this will be the gross pay. Else, this is going to be the gross pay for working overtime. So we ended our if statement. Knowing the gross pay of the employee, we can now compute the tax to be paid by the employee using the sliding scale. This scale can, can be categorized into two those who pay tax and those who do not pay tax. In the brackets of the taxpayers, your gross pay must be greater than or equal to 125,001 cities, meaning only those with 125,001 cities or more pay taxes. Now, if you are in that bracket and your gross pay is less than or equal to 250,000 cities, then your tax is 5% of your gross pay. Else, if it is less than 1,175,000 cities, then your tax is 10% of your gross pay. So the same pattern follows for 15% and 20%. Now, if it is over 5 million, if your gross pay is over 5 million, here we use an else. Your tax is 30% of your gross pay. Now, we use an else again. This else goes for those who are not in the bracket of the taxpayers. These employees pay nothing towards tax, so their tax equals zero. So we end if. Again, 
we compute the other deductions. Social security is 6% of the gross pay, constituency tax is 3%, and welfare contribution is 2%. Now, if an employee has more than three dependents, then an amount of 5,000 cities is paid for each dependent in excess of three towards National Health Insurance Scheme. So in excess of three, if I count three of the children, the remainder of them is what you're going to pay for. So number of dependents minus three. Else, that is, if you, the employee, if the employee does not have more than three children, then this employee is paying nothing towards the NHIS scheme. So we end our if statement. Now we can compute for our net pay, which is the gross pay minus the deductions, and also print it out. Now we end the for loop. Remember, we are doing this for every employee from employee one to employee 100. All right, friends, we are through with the algorithm. Let's take a look at our code in C++. But before that, I will encourage you to pause the video, give it a like, and subscribe. Very well, to so our code in C++. Because the values we are using are too huge, the computer is going to display our results, that is the net pay, the deductions, and the gross pay in scientific notation. Example, your gross pay is 2 exponent 3 Ghana C's, which is not recognizable. So to avoid this, I have included the input output manipulator library. Now in the int main function, I declared every variable here as a double and initialized regular rate and overtime rate to be 25,000 and 1.5 of the regular rates respectively. I also declared hours work and number of children to be integers since you, you, can, you, you, can, you cannot have a decimal number of children. Now I set the for loop which will run for every employee from employee 1 to employee 100. I take the number of hours worked and the number of dependents as inputs and set the if statements that will compute the gross pay if the employee worked for regular hours or worked for overtime hours. Again, I set the if block that will compute the tax of employees in the taxpayers bracket and also for employees outside the bracket who will pay nothing due to their gross pay. We compute for the deductions and also for the NHIS given that the number of children is greater than zero or less than or equal to zero. We now compute for the net pay given the formula that the gross pay minus the deductions. Remember, because we do not want to compute, we do not want the computer to display our results in scientific notation, this show point and set position will convert the results to floating point values or doubles. Show points, as the name implies, will show the point, the decimal point, with a mantissa. And then the set precision will determine the number of decimal places to leave our answer. That is also dependent on the exponent. So we print our results from there. So this last end line is for readability sake or clarity sake. It should leave a space between the first employee and the consecutive employees so that we will be able to read them properly. We end the for loop and also end our program. Now I'm going to run our, our code to see how it looks. So I entered 56 hours for employee 1 and 7 dependents. On pressing enter via my keyboard, these are his deductions and then his net pay. So as you can see, this program will run from employee 1 to employee 100. Alright friends, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Till then, a party!